Hey guys, today it was announced that GameMaker Studio 2.3 is now in beta. Nocturne from YoYo Games announced that on the forum today, uh, which I am super excited about, have been waiting for, and I am not alone. If I scroll down to the replies to this post, we can see that there's a lot of people who are also excited for this update, and for a very good reason. It brings some uh, much applauded changes that uh, quite a few of us have been waiting for a long time that uh, the GML language has um, not had. So today I just want to just kind of walk through um, and discuss some of these changes and some things going on. I'm not going to go in depth, but just kind of review and some thoughts on this. So uh, just a, a note that this is a, um, a limited beta right now. So as Nocturne's mentioned, it's a limited sign up. So if you want to uh, sign up for this beta, you need to actually go to a link supplied here. I'll link in the description a link to it. Just make sure that you are logged into your YoYo Games account when you try to sign in for the beta. But yeah, you have to sign up um, and hopefully they email you and give you uh, access to the beta. Um, but anyhow, for now, I'm going to click on some of these links that Nocturne's left for this uh, blog post from YoYo Games about this beta. All right, so here's some stuff they're just talking about, uh, just an overview here. Um, some of the things, main things is sequences, uh, animation curve. Um, they've also added, they made changes to the asset browser. I didn't know this was coming. This was cool. Um, I'm kind of excited to see what they've done with this. Um, and they've also added tagging. And I think if you've used Unity, I think it's similar to probably how Unity uses, I could be wrong, but that's actually really useful as well. And I didn't had no idea that was coming. Um, but what I'm super excited for is the GML changes. Uh, this is, some of you have been like concerned, like, oh no, is this going to change how I use GameMaker? Do I have to learn a bunch of new stuff, this and that? I wouldn't be concerned. Um, I think these changes are great. And I think they're, they're much needed changes that uh, are just going to benefit everyone. And don't be, don't be scared. If, if you have no idea how, how these things work, I think after like two weeks of using them, I think you'll be like totally good. Um, with the changes and you'll appreciate them. And I'm, I'm super excited. Um, so yeah, and if you do get into the beta, uh, it's a different installer from the current uh, installed version of GameMaker on your computer. So it won't override your existing um, project, kind of like how the existing beta works right now. It's gonna be a whole different installer so you can safely test on the beta without wrecking your existing projects because your existing projects will have to upgrade to 2.3 and they won't be able to go back. So be warned, make backups of your existing projects before testing the beta. All right, so links here, um, there's other uh, links here too. We're going to go over the IDE, new IDE features. So the first one again is the asset browser. So you no longer have to like put um, all of your uh, assets in the specific asset folders. You can actually just group them as you want, where it makes logically sense. So if, you're, if I'm working on like a tool, I can put all my tools, assets in one thing and rather have them spread all over so I can easily find them really quickly. I think this is great. I, recently I've wanted this more and more. Um, they've also made some other changes. So you can like color stuff and make things easier to locate on your, in the resource tree and all that. Uh, they've added uh, favorites. Um, now it's cool, you can now explicitly set the order of your rooms. So before, uh, up until now, your room order has been dependent upon uh, the order of your rooms in the asset tree and the hierarchy, but now you can like explicitly set where you, how you want the order of your rooms, which makes total sense. That's great. Um, another cool thing being added, uh, we have animation curves. Uh, this is a welcome addition. Uh, you, uh, for those of you who are used to like tweening and things like that, this allows you to like smoothly interpolate values uh, between a start and destination value and just gives a lot of smooth um, accelerations and things like that with values. Uh, if you don't know what this stuff is, don't be scared. You don't have to use it, but it's there for when you do want these things. It's going to be a really great addition. I am looking forward to making use of animation curves. Uh, kind of in the same line as that is sequences. Um, if you're if you're used to like spine or something like that, you're probably going to be really used to this. It's going to allow you. It's kind of like kind of involved with this, um, but it's going to allow you to like animate things between different points and have it like lerp and animate and have um, different easing curves to like really smoothly play out those animations. It's going to be really great for like setting up ma menus and things like that. Like more than just menus, but. I mean, for setting up like your main menus and option screens, it's going to be like this really awesome thing for just making everything come alive and move smoothly and just be really great. This is a huge thing. Um, I'm sure a lot of people are looking forward to this. I'm excited to get my hands on it and just try it out. Um, but that's going to be really, really cool. Uh, 
Uh, and here's just some more examples of them just testing out um, this thing. There's some on YouTube, there's some unlisted videos right now for uh, introducing how to use the system. Um, I can also leave a link in the description for how you can access those as well. Uh, we have down here, you can actually, in these animation curves, you can set, sorry, in the sequences, sorry, you can actually even set events to happen. So um, at a certain point in the animation, you can have uh, a certain thing called, so you can call some code when you need it. Uh, it asynchronously, you can have something called and it will like, so at the end, you can set like an endpoint. It'll, it'll call some code when it finishes or like partway through. If you want like your player like walking and there's like steps, you can like set like points where he steps on the ground. You can have like a sound play when, when his feet hit or stuff like that, right? Um, which is just really awesome. Uh, something, so that's just a quick overview of IDE changes. I really skimmed over a lot, um, but there's a lot there. Go through this and read this yourself. It's just really, really cool. The other thing that I am super excited about though, is the new GML features. I am like super stoked. So let's load this up. Uh, the first change I mentioned here is arrays. And all arrays are now 1D arrays. There's no more 2D arrays. And I have to laugh. I noticed here that this example has an error in it. That's a period that would break the compiler in this case, but nocturne. All right, so uh, yeah, so everything's a 1D array. Uh, so now instead of doing arrays like this, we now do uh, 2D arrays like this. It's a little change. It's actually, this is a, again, a very welcome change because it now allows us to do three-dimensional arrays or more. You can do three-dimensional arrays, four-dimensional arrays. For whatever reason you want to do that, you can, you're now free to do that before you were, had to fight for making these kind of solutions. Now you can just make your array dimensions as large as you want. There might be a limit, I don't know, but it seems like you can, now make larger things. Uh, so now the array length, these are deprecated and you just have one function called array length and array resize. Um, so these are, yeah, no longer used. Another exciting change is they chained accessors. This is really good. Um, so before, this was not possible before. So now I can call a grid and in this grid, uh, I'm accessing a list and I can directly access the list right away. I don't have to like, cache um, the grid to a variable and then like then do another call i can do it all in one same thing here just more complex examples if these scare you don't worry about it these are like complex examples that you don't have to use and for those who need it um it would make more sense especially if like if we're using macros and stuff this might make it more clear to read right now they're just using zeros and but usually you would probably have more descriptive things to help make sense of things so these look scary and like what's going on but this is great news for those who need it and know what's going on it just it's going to make code cleaner and i hopefully cleaner or mess here <laughs> there's that possibility too but i'm sure somebody will will make an awful code base out of this and just destroy everything and burn our eyes um i have a couple people <laughs> in mind when I say that, and you know who you are. Um, so, okay, now this is the part that I'm probably the most excited about is to change the functions and scripts and method variables. Like, this is just great. GameMaker now has methods, fantastic. Um, this is just going to clean up code. Gone now are the days of having a messy um, resource tree hierarchy of all these scripts and all these things. You can now, like, you can now uh, organize things so much easier because of this. It's just so much better. Um, so now the change is, uh, we now declare functions like, so here's, here's give an example of like how you would do a function for now. Uh, you have your argument zero. So this is a script called move follow. And this would just move your object towards an object at a certain speed. So this is a traditional up until now, this is how you would make a function. So the change is now we have, we're gonna to have to like change it to function move follow. We use this function keyword. And, and now this is now basically the same thing as this, but now we are using this function keyword move follow and then everything else is the same as before, except here we have argument zero and argument one. This is how we passed arguments and how we could uh, access them. Now we can actually use named arguments. So we don't have to like assign the argument to a temporary variable and we can just directly use um, speed here and object. These are directly passed as arguments. We don't have to cache them anymore as into a temporary variable. Bam, way better. This is just gonna like, I'm going back through my old code and just changing so much stuff because of this. It's gonna be so good. Um, so he's going over here. 
Yeah, so the cool thing is that with this, you can actually you can declare multiple different functions within a single script. So you can organize all kinds of functions that make sense logically, I hope, into one script and you can keep them there. And so when, rather than having all these different scripts and different things all over, you can in the same text box, same window, you can assign multiple functions. It's going to be so good. Again, if this scares you, don't worry about it. If this concerns you how this all works, inline functions, don't be concerned. It's not going to change much uh, really. And in your existing projects, when they're upgraded, they're going to automatically uh, be adapted to this. So you're not going to have to change your code base uh, as long as everything updates properly, as they say. Um, but your existing projects are going to keep working as they are. And you just got to make some little adjustments. And I think within a week or two, you'll be up to snuff and you'll just really, really enjoy this. So yeah. So here's an example here of uh, multiple functions in one script. We have function move follow, uh, turn towards, and log. This is all one script. It's in script one. Neatly organized, really clean. Um, again, I'm sure some people will go overboard and put way too much in one script and make it a mess. But you know what? If you're organized for just organization and for like if you do it right, this is going to be fantastic. All right. Um, yeah, and something I'm not. There's a thing here is that. This is going to be great for creating scripts uh, or functions that are belong only to certain objects. You can, you're going to be able to dynamically change which uh, uh, which so an object can have its own uh, variable, its own variable called like uh, attack, and you can have a function and you can assign the function to that variable, and you could even change it to different functions and dynamically change what attack is actually calling as a function. Like this may be something really over your head for some of you, but this is just really good stuff. Um, so by default, all variables are now global that are called in scripts. Uh, and then function, yeah, so you can even, using the var keyword, you know how you use var for like temporary variables, you can now create like a temporary function inside a script. So if I assign a function to a temporary variable, that function will only exist for that script, the only that piece of code. And then once that script's finished, it, it's gone. So you, that script, that function or script doesn't exist anywhere else. It's only for that, like that specific piece of code. And it just keeps it just very isolated and very clean. Um, okay, so let's go on the structs here. Structs are really cool. Structs are basically like lightweight objects. Um, they allow you to assign value variables to um, these set pieces of, of data and you can treat them a lot like objects. So here we have an example of he's creating my struct, which has a value of a and a value of B. A is a number 20 and B is a string saying hello world. And in this case, it's really easy to access the data from these structs like my struct dot a plus equals one. So in this case, if my struct a was 20 and I did my struct a plus one plus equals one, it would become 21. My struct A is now 21. Where my struct B is my struct A plus 20. So this would be then this plus 20. And then, so it's just, it's kind of like a, an object or an instance accessing it. Um, again, this might be confusing to some of you who are not using it. And I'm not going to go into too much detail, but like this is just great because GameMaker has been really held back. Um, I know that I have been in a lot of circles of people who I bring up Game Maker and it's like, oh, well, you know, it's it's a kid's tool or it's, it's, it's just not, you know, can you really use that for professional stuff? This is one more thing that allows you to actually like, one more feature that is not a gimmick. It actually just adds uh, to the Gmail language that a lot of languages already have. And those um, who have used them in other languages are going to be like, yes, this is awesome. This is great to have. And I, what I'm curious to see, I want to know if this actually is going to, right now for JSON, um, when we decode and encode JSON, we use maps. And I'm wondering if we're going to be able to use data structures instead now. I'm not sure. I'm trying to think of the repercussions of that. But I wonder if we're going to move away from maps for JSON to, um, to data structures. Like I would be just totally excited um, to use structs instead. I just it would be way cleaner and you don't have to use like the map syntax and strings and all that. Um, yeah, there's more here. Anyways, I'll let you guys dig into that more. 
Last thing here is exceptions, try and catch. Honestly, this is something that like I've never used in other languages. Maybe I should, but I don't. So I'm not too excited for this, <laughs> but there are people who are. So right now in GameMaker, if you get an error, it shows this. You get this default. Uh, if your game goes in the wild and there's an error and the game crashes, people get this. It doesn't look too professional. Um, so basically, in a nutshell, this is going to allow you to like create your own um, create your own custom errors. You're now in charge of how you're going to report errors to people, uh, which is a really good thing. So you can test for errors, and then based upon if any error reports, you can throw up your own messages, your own errors, uh, close down, save your files, close it down, shut it down gracefully or some other kind of custom message. But basically, you can customize it so people don't see this anymore when an error pops up. You're in control control, and you can make you can leave it more professional, like whatever you want, like, sorry, oops, please contact us at this um, address uh, with more information to help fix this or something, right? Uh, to redirect them to like your, your um, help team or something like that if they experience a problem. All right, this is just a quick summary. I'm sorry, guys, if I've kind of butchered some of the explanations. In a nutshell, I'm super excited for these changes. They're really good. For you guys that are like kind of nervous about um, what's going on, don't be. This is good changes. And it's just good for the whole community as a whole. Uh, people who want to get, people who've wanted to dig deeper in the game maker but felt limited, they hit a wall. This is going to raise that wall higher, um, allow people who want just more complex stuff to go further, while it's not going to scare away the new users. It's going to be, um, I'm sure with some tutorials that people are going to put through and uh, uh, put together, that it'll be like a really good transition. Um, and I'm excited to see like how the reaction is overall uh, when things are uh, out in the wild here. Um, I'm hoping to put some tutorials together. I might go uh, review, continue to review some of these things and just uh, piece by piece go over some of these things and show you guys what's going on with this stuff when I get access to the beta. All right, guys. Hope you have a great day and um, hope you guys enjoy the beta. Take care.